In this second session, I want to talk to you about the importance of the church. Now, the Bible says that God has created three institutions in our world. The first institution he create, created was the institution of the family in Genesis chapter 2. That is a God-created institution. The second institution God created is the institution of the government. That's found in Genesis chapter 8. And the third institution that God created is the institution of the church. The church is a God-created institution, and that makes it very important. So let me say a few things about the church. And I'm going to read from my scriptures right here off of my paper. You can look them up in your Bible, which I hope you will. But for the sake of time, I thought this would go more quickly. And you can find it there on the web page. So first of all, I'd like to say that the church is a permanent institution. In Matthew 16, verse 18, we have the first mention of the church in the Bible. Jesus said, I also say to you that you are Peter, and upon this rock, he was talking about Peter's confession of faith, I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overpower it. There we're told that God, that Jesus intended to create the church, and that the gates of Hades, that is all the power that the devil could muster, would not be able to, to uh, prevent the church from coming into existence and growing because it was a divinely created institution. In Ephesians 5:25. Uh, we're told that husbands should love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself up for her so that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word, that he might present to him the church in all her glory, having no spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she would be holy and blameless. Now, first of all, we're told in those verses that Jesus loves the church. He loves the church so much that he gave up his life for the church. So it would be unnatural for us as Christians not to love what Jesus loves, and Jesus loves the church. We're also told about a purpose that he has for the church. He wants to present the church as holy and blameless. He wants us to grow in our faith and to become pure and holy and imitators of him in that way, and he wants to accomplish that through the church. So the church is a permanent institution, and then the church is a powerful institution. Ephesians 1.22 says, And he put all things in subjection under his feet, and gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. That is, he, God the Father, put all things in subjection to his feet, that is, God the Son, Jesus Christ, and he, and he infuses all that power in and through his church. So if you want to be a part of a powerful institution, an institution that can change this world, then you would want to be involved in the church because that's what God is doing. God is doing his work through this institution called the church. So it's a permanent institution. The church is a powerful institution. And the church is a personal institution. And Acts 2, just after the church came into formation, uh, was formed, in Acts 2.46, it says, Day by day, continuing with one mind in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they were taking their meals together with gladness and sincerity of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord was adding to their number day by day those who were being saved. Now, I need you to understand that these were people from all types of nations, all types of backgrounds, all types of different socioeconomic groups, and yet they came together and they had gladness and sincerity of heart and joy because that's what the Holy Spirit was producing in their life and in their church. Ideally, that's what the church is like. It's a place that is filled with love and fellowship. It's where we find support from others and encouragement. And in times of need, we have people who care and minister to us and us to them. That's what God intended for the church to become, a fellowship of believers where we can have a common bond and common love and where we can grow in our faith in a very wholesome and a very joy-filled environment. So the church is a personal institution. And then finally, the church is a purposeful institution. Ephesians 4, 11 through 14 says he gave some as apostles and some as prophets and some as evangelists and some as pastors and teachers 
for the equipping of the saints for the work of service to the building up of the body of Christ until we all attain to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God to a mature man to the measure of the stature which belongs to the fullness of Christ. That is, the church is a place where we can grow in our faith and become mature just like Christ. And God has put people in the church like pastors and teachers and, and others to help us grow in our faith. So I cannot underestimate the importance as a new Christian and a new believer for you to find a church that you can get involved in, not just any church, but a strong Bible-believing church. Get involved where you can learn and grow in your faith and have fellowship with other believers. I would encourage you to go as often as you possibly can, absorb as much as you can, and get to know that pe the people are there. And I believe you'll find that contrary to what many people say today, that the church is an environment that is filled with love and people who care about one another and a place where we have an opportunity to genuinely worship and praise the God that we love. There's no better environment on the earth for producing what you need as a new Christian. And that's because the church is a divinely created institution by God for that purpose. God bless you and thank you for listening.